Thank you very much. That was really instructive and uh, brought us back to ourselves and uh, how space also benefits uh, society. I'm looking to Marie Antoinette. We, we started 20 minutes late the session. Now it's the official end time. Can we have some time for f some more questions or five minutes? Okay, are there questions? I see a few. Please uh, tell us to who you address the question as well. Question. Ask the question to Mr. Neil. Uh, with, with Stanford Robotics using uh, ChatGPT kind of uh, tools, what kind of possibilities do you see I, uh, with tools like this? To would that be able to bring to space? Uh, would that extend the capabilities of what we can do at the, with the space robotics at the moment? That's a tough question. <laughs> Um, okay, let me kind of circumnavigate that question by uh, telling you what's, what has been tested already. Um, you saw that uh, the Simon, the, the, the ball that floats around on, uh, on station, it's actually still on station now, or on, on station the second time. Um, what it has together with it is, an, is IBM's Watson, which is also an AI assistant that uh, can, you, can be used to assist the, uh, the astronaut in daily note keeping, maybe providing ideas. Um, that's the level that has happened so far. My guess is for space applications, being able to uh, security requirements will be a lot tougher when you get to uh, things that are safety critical. So I know it's an exciting uh, field that people are excited and nervous about. Um, uh, but for it to be fully integrated into a sa safety critical system, that will probably be still a bit of time. But in the background, uh, maybe. Okay. Thank you. Next question. I saw someone up oh, there. Okay. Bernard. Yeah, well, so congratulations to DLR, to the Mechatronics Institute. I mean, uh, if I would start my career now, I would want to work at your place. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, look at what you're able to do with uh, latest technologies, with putting the thing together, with uh, putting it for planetary exploration, but also, you know, human application. So you didn't talk too much about this Robex and Arches campaign where I had the, the, the pleasure to participate, where you tested uh, multiple robots, teleoperated. Also, we had ISA involved uh, in the last Arches campaign in Etna. Could you say more and how this is going to lead us to get uh, Europe uh, really very active in telerobotics uh, on the surface for the Artemis program? Sure. Um, actually, implicitly, we talked about uh, Robex and Arches in two folds. One was the, uh, the AHEAD program uh, where we had the, uh, the uh, World Food Program, SHERP, uh, being teleoperated. That technology is very closely linked to what we uh, performed in Arches. On the other side is all the space to ground teleoperation experiments that we've done. It's kind of the mirror other side of Arches. We, you know, Armin and I work together. Armin is the uh, program lead of, um, of Robex and, and, and Arches at DLR. We work very closely. It was just because I only had 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, so a question to the public, who wants to work there? Raise your hand. Come talk. Uh, yes, go. <laughs> Thank you. The There's a question there. I hope you will understand my question. We are discussing space exploration. My question is how different is a space robot from a ground robot? Do you need a suit, a space suit? I guess that was for me, um, or anybody else who wants it. Um, space robot and ground robot, uh, they are similar in some ways. Um, so let's start with what's similar. 
Um, in our case, I, I showed you uh, in the beginning, we showed you the, the, the robots that, uh, you know, have that dexterity, have the ability to sense uh, its surroundings. That's actually the same technology we have on ground. The difference is, of course, as a lot of people who work, you for sure know, space qualified components are different. Uh, you have to look at a much longer life cycle. The radiation uh, uh, harden, hard, hardness, that's what's different. And we also are way, way more careful with what we send up. So we are a lot less um, uh, uh, reckless with what we send up. But there's actually a lot of similarities uh, in what we do on ground and, on, uh, and in space. I don't know if that answered the question that you're looking so what for. What about the space suit? The space food? The, the, the space suit. I can haven't seen. Can work in vacuum in other words? Can you say that again? Can you work in vacuum? Oh, the robots will work in vacuum, of course. Uh, there's already uh, at least two robots that is uh, permanently on the outboard of the uh, ISS, one in a Jap on the Japanese uh, segment and one on the US segment of Canadarm. And they work in vacuum. They've worked in vacuum since last century. So they definitely do work. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the only thing that I need to do is to thank all my, uh, my speakers. And Eric will make a very short announcement.